Thanks, Quinn. Uh, welcome everybody tonight. And uh, uh, we have a, a real tough schedule, but we'll work through it. Um, uh, anybody have any, uh, uh, declare any conflict of interest, declare any conflict of interest? Not seeing anything. I got this, get rid of this. There. Um, okay. Next up, we will uh, move by Councilor Dirksen, second by Councilor Elliott. The minutes of the Town of Minto, June 1st, 2021, regular council meeting be approved. Anybody uh, have any comments or anybody opposed? Seeing none, carried. Okay. Additional items. I have, I have a couple, I think. Anybody else got any? Uh, David? And Judy? Okay, if you come up with anything, let me know later. All right. Moved by Councilor Anderson, second by Councilor McKenzie, the Town of Minnow Council convenes in the Committee of the Whole. Anybody opposed? Carried. Okay. We have no public meetings, no delegations, correspondence. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Councilor Dirksen, the Council receives the correspondence as information. Anybody want to pull any of the correspondence? If not, uh, okay, anybody opposed? Carried, okay. And I will turn it over to uh, Councilor Dirksen. Sorry, that came, up. Go ahead, that came up pretty quick. Okay, and uh, we have a, a report from the Trails Committee and I'll call on Paul Judge to take us through that. Thank you, Councillor Dirksen, uh, Mayor Bridge, and members of Council. Uh, a fairly, fairly easy report here. I think we uh, met virtually again uh, when, when uh, the committee had its May meeting. Um, I did a, a fairly extensive report to the group there. I'm not going to go into too serious or extensive detail on that, but some of the things that I, maybe are uh, highlights from, from uh, those minutes are uh, just meetings I had one-on-one -on -one outdoors with some of the, the members who have long histories and know a bit more about the trail system than myself. So just trying to get a bit of the background and understanding, get everybody on the same page and uh, um, moving forward with some, some uh, directions that we're all on board with. So Jill Welsh and I met in Hairston. Um, she's a, a terrific uh, wealth of information there with the trail system there and a great worker and volunteer. Um, and then Councillor McKenzie and I met in Clifford as well um, prior to the last meeting, uh, just to, to point out some of the things that he, he's wanting to bring to the committee to discuss going forward. Um, I had done an online course offered through Ontario Parks Association. That's pretty informative three-part seminar just on trails risk management. So got some good um, information to share with the group there and, and uh, just protocols that we would like to implement on our trail system too going forward. Um, we talked a bit about budget. Again, we haven't, just with, with not being able to, to go out and do, we haven't really uh, had the opportunity to spend a whole lot of stuff. So we're hoping that in, we have a, a meeting coming up this week. We're hoping the following meeting in July will be one that we don't need to do virtually and we can get out because that whole group certainly enjoys the outdoors. So we'll get some site meetings. That seems to be well received by the group. And then the people who are from a specific area of the municipality gets familiarized with the other parts of the trail system and then we can kind of work as a team to make some decisions on that stuff. Um, some I, I did find a few projects that we're hoping to get some volunteers for just simple things like like painting some gates and, and uh, signing up for some other small things that people can do in as individuals or for one or two people uh, in the for for the time being until we're able to to tackle some things as a bigger group. Um, Grace had also mentioned social media. We're trying to get that going a little bit more too, as people are um, connecting that way more, just to get information out, whether it be uh, about how how we want the trails used appropriately, um, or also just just some uh, possibilities, some some contests, get people out there do, using their photography skills and submitting them things we could maybe use overall in the town social media as well. Um, 
several of the items were were put forward to the next meeting because the the members who had suggested those as uh, items to include on the agenda weren't able to attend the meeting themselves. So uh, uh, this week we'll we'll hope to to get uh, a little bit more discussion drawn through the rest of those. So I, I think that kind of sums it up. Okay, thanks, Paul. Does anyone have any questions for Paul? Yeah, Mayor thanks. Uh, to you, uh, Chair. Um, Paul, I, I know in this line linkage, and I know we talked a bit about this. And um, so we had widened, spent quite a bit of money widening the road on White's Road and getting it into the roundabout. And I know it's a little tighter going from the roundabout into Harrison. Um, and I, I saw Ron's comment on there. He was going to talk to landowners. I think. I, I don't know if you want to go down that path again. I, I think we pretty well, um, three or four or five years ago, none of those land, they haven't changed it to the best of my knowledge, the people that own the, the blockages, I would call it. So are, are we looking at that? Because uh, we were, because uh, the county now allows you to put some signage on the side of the road. Did you investigate that at all or, or what's happening now? So yeah, there. I, I, I guess the, the, the basis there right now is we've got two different thoughts and I, I understand like you're saying with the, uh, um, all we need to do is do that connect on the seventh line over to to the county road whites road so that's certainly an option to buy buy the idea of having to to get agreement from landowners from that point into Harriston so that that's probably the simplest suggestion uh, we just were kind of open it up to discussions. I, I, I believe there was a suggestion by one of the committee members too that there could be an alternate um, route uh, a little further west where there's another train line that comes in. And I'm not 100% familiar with that myself um, or the history behind that too. So um, we, we haven't delved down that, that road, but that was just a suggestion that was there. So they're doing a bit of brainstorming at that point. Okay. Um, well, I just... I, I just don't want you to waste a lot of time on that because they we did an extensive study on trying to figure that out. And we wouldn't have spent the money that we spent uh, when they did White's Road and widened it all out there if, if we thought there was any kind of hope. And I don't know what trail line you're talking about. I have no clue as to where that went. I'm not familiar with it either, to, to be honest, uh, Mayor Bridge. Um, yeah, no, that's that's a good point taken um, in, in that, uh, that that's kind of a... A bunch of research that's already been uh, uh, put together and and some money and in, uh, infrastructure invested in that already. Yeah. Well, I I know the history. I mean, I I couldn't have been turned down harder and and longer <laughs> than what we got turned down on. And uh, yeah, okay. There is a um, oh sorry, Mike. Um, there is a there there was a railway. Uh, it is just west of. Um, of the rail line that's existing there now. Um, you used to be able to see it kind of go through the bush, but you really can't see much of it anymore. So I don't know whether there's any possibility there or not. And I don't know who owns that anymore even. Um, Mike, did you want to say something? I was just going to mention too, they could be referencing the hydro easement that, yeah. that go, that's just to the west there too, but it's a hydro easement as well, so. And we never got any traction on that, did we Mike? No, no. no. Okay, yep. anyone else? Uh, CAO Thompson, you're muted. Thank you're you, not. Thank, okay. you, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I just wanted to add um, uh, our, our treasurer, Gord Duffel, bringing a report to council on different grant opportunities and different funding streams. And one of the uh, things that we met as staff is being considered as upgrades and extensions to trail. So that's top of mind for us to get get a trail extension specifically for this route funded this year. Uh, so we'll have a, a better understanding of uh, costing and grant opportunities and funding. Uh, hopefully, we're hoping for the July meeting. So just uh, give you an idea where we are with that project. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, uh, seeing no one else, I will read the recommendation. It's moved by Councillor Gunson and seconded by Councillor Anderson that Council receives the Minto Trails Committee minutes of May 20th, 2021 for information and approves any recommendations contained therein. Is there anyone who's opposed to that? 
And seeing none, I will declare that carried and I'll pass the chair back to Mayor Bridge. Thank you. Now uh, you're muted, Mr. Mayor. Oh, very much used to, okay. Uh, yes, next up is the culture round uh, table minutes and I'll turn it over to uh, Belinda to, uh, to bring that to us. Thanks, Mayor Bridge and members of council. I'll just go quickly through the minutes from our May 31st meeting here and hit on the highlights. Obviously, it is Pride Month, so our Minto Pride Committee has been really busy. They've done well. They sold out of t-shirts and uh, quite a few lawn signs have gone out. I'm sure there's over 70 out there now. And uh, they're doing a campaign right now called Out and Proud in Minto. So they're highlighting people within Minto and key leaders in this space across Canada. So that's been really interesting. And they've done some great work decorating the downtowns as always. Our museum, although still not able to open in, until stage three, we are able to have our students in there. So Felix Weaver is back and um, our new student Sadie Lynn Beeman is there. She was hired under a Young Canada Works grant and they're uh, plowing through all of the collections material and are making good progress seeing as the museum's closed. Uh, we had special guests at this meeting. As you uh, probably know, we're getting more involved in diversity inclusion activities. And uh, this includes being um, more active and um, supportive of the Guelph Black Heritage Society and the work that they're doing and seeing how we can support their efforts and bringing some of that programming to Minto and help to educate our community around that uh, topic. So that was really interesting. Um, another key thing out of this meeting was our COVID-19 support fund. So we had launched the Zoom platform. So we had eight out of 10 um, grants spoken for there. And we have now brought forward uh, PPE and safety equipment um, grant, as well as one for promoting and advertising events and um, volunteer opportunities. Um, we are tying these to some training. So um, we're working with the workplace um, prevention and workplace safety and prevention group uh, to offer training around this. So if people want the PPE grant, they're going to have to send at least one person to attend this training virtually. And then around the um, promotion grant, they will have to advertise their event on our website. And uh, in order to access that or advertise their volunteer opportunities on the website as well. Um, we were advised by public health to kind of hold off on putting out any grants related to events at this point because they're still not encouraging that. Um, so I think we're holding off until September on both of those programs. And then the group's just getting ready to plan culture days. And that's about it out of that meeting if there's any questions. Questions? Great job, Belinda. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to talk about it a little later about what you did last night. But uh, you know that this this committee has done yeoman's work during the pandemic, and uh, very and frustrating work in the sense that it really is mostly about events. We we try to run a lot of events and stuff. So when you haven't been able to do that, you certainly uh, filled your plate with some other really important items. So um, moved by Councillor Elliott, seven by Deputy Mayor Turton. The council receives the cultural roundtable committee. Make committee meeting minutes of May 31st for 2021 for information approves recommendation campaign herein. Anybody opposed? Carried. Okay, go ahead, Belinda, you're up again. Economic okay. development? Yeah, so yeah, we just had our economic development planning committee meeting last uh, Thursday and lots of important topics were on the agenda. Uh, Charlene presented the labor market update, which I always find really interesting. And of note there is the unemployment rate for our area in April was 11.4% and it has now dropped in May to 8.6%. And hopefully that just keeps going down. Uh, her full report is attached to Schedule A. As you know, our industrial lands are filling up and we're running out. So CAO Thompson uh, joined us and we talked about uh, next steps and what we're going to do there. And he's going to be bringing back a report, uh, as you know, to yourselves, as well as to the committee to review, hopefully in September. And then we had some county staff join us to go over the attainable housing strategy, where they're at with that. Um, and they were looking for some input from our group. And I think we came up with some good ideas and some next steps. And uh, Crystal will be reporting back to us likely in October on where they're at there. 
And then lots of discussion around the whole work from home and how that's impacting um, employers and different things that people are doing that are, are working in that space. So that's the highlights from there. Excellent. Um, I'll, I'll read the, uh, the recommendation first. Move by Councilor McKenzie, second by Councilor Gunston. The Council receives the Economic Development Planning Committee meeting minutes of June 10th, 2021 for information approves recommendations came, contained therein. Um, any questions or comments? Uh, I just have one comment, Belinda, is we had a, at our Economic Development meeting today for the county, they've updated some more of their stuff on attainable housing and um, what you did there is sort of what we have to do more of with, with the report that's there. We have to get out to the public and really get the public to understand. We don't need to have people questioning why we need bigger density and whatnot. So uh, there were gonna be a big communication campaign coming forward to explain how we're gonna keep our, our housing prices down enough that our young people and our seniors can afford them and, and whatever. So and our immigrants that are coming into the area. So very important. And uh, I really, the, the meeting we had today, there was really some good stuff coming out of it. And they've got some really good contractors and other people involved as well, which I was really pleased to hear. So it, it's a full full uh, battle on. And uh, then we'll also take it to the other two levels of government because there has to be some help there as well. But um, yeah, some of the stuff we've already done in Minto, I think is really helping us. Um, some of the bylaws we passed, those are the things we have to make sure that everybody understands why we're doing those kinds of things. So I'm really looking forward to the communication. And it was nice to see that they came up and did that uh, one with you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Anderson, I believe you have your hand up. Go ahead. There Sorry. You go. Um, that meeting was fascinating um, and the report from fairly disturbing. And when I hear us talk about we're going to continue to have attainable housing, we haven't got attainable housing. <laughs> the, the, record, the report was crystal clear that people, two people working full time at TG Minto can afford a $300,000 home. I challenge anybody here to find me a $300,000 home in Minto, as astonishing as that is to those of us who paid $34,000 for a home 20 years ago or 30 years ago or however long ago that was. It's not attainable. We have nowhere for our youth to go and we have nowhere safe for our seniors to downsize to. And that's the bigger issue. And we're seeing more and more and more frail elderly people that are in catastrophic. They're, they're one slip away, one fall away, one illness away, one cough away from total disaster. And we're finding them on the floors of their accommodations because they're not suitable. They're not one story. They can't get help from home care. They can't afford to place their other loved one because then they will lose that housing that isn't appropriate for them now. Yeah. If they lose their loved one, if they place them as they should be placed, they will lose their social security and their CPP if they had one. And most of the people of this age, a lot of the women did not work outside of the home or at least not for very long in their lives. They cannot afford. So we see them coming back and forth and back and forth constantly because they shouldn't be at home and they can't afford to place them because then they will be homeless. I can't, and I know we're working hard, I'm not Chris, but the situation is so dire that in the healthcare field, you're just watching it and waiting it for to totally self-implode. It is so concerning. And the youth, well, you're just gonna have, it doesn't matter whether you're serving cheese or not, they're gonna be some of them living in your house probably yeah. for the rest of our lives because there's nowhere else for them to go. All good, all good points, Councilman Anderson, and, and I, I can tell you that, that they've all been added into the, the, the problem that's the, that we're trying to solve. So, I, and, and I will tell you that this is a top priority. So we're, it's not just with us, it's not just with the no, county. No, it's, it's the whole it's province, the, province, province, the whole country. The province, the country. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have, to, we have to look at how we're going to do this and, and uh, but we're working on it. And, uh, and, and I'm not saying we're not, I'm just encouraging us to keep, because the situation is critical. It's, no. it, they're in dire straits and we need to continue the good work we're doing because we got everything, to find every, Everything you've said is, is, uh, is multiplied 10 times. It, it, is, it is something that we all know that that's the case. So yeah, we'll uh, keep you informed as we move forward on this. That one of the big things is 
and I really feel comfortable with this council. This council has been very good about, and when we have pushed back in certain situations that we've kept up our, we've been honest to the fact that we've kept diversity. We, some of our infill lots, we've, they've gone from one, from a single family to triplexes and duplexes. That helps. And it's still not attainable necessarily, but it helps. So mm -hmm. these are all the things we have to continue. And this, this council hasn't got a problem. And I, and I said that, and, and maybe all councils aren't the same, that we, we've been pretty good about keeping the pressure of people give you sometimes about changing neighborhoods or whatever. We, we've looked at it in Clifford. We've looked at it in a few places. We had pushback, but you've stood strong and said, no, we need this. So I feel comfortable talking about our council and how, how we are on the right page. So now we just have to get more land development. We got to get more opportunities. And part of the toolkit will be, I think, will be how do you do subsidization in some sort to make sure that the builders uh, can still make a profit because you can't ask the builders to build them without making some kind of profit. And I don't think we can just do it all public housing. It just doesn't, they just, it, they just can't do it that way. But uh, I'm hoping that we'll get there. And every, there's a lot of people working on this. Anyways, thanks for those comments. Okay. Uh, Anybody opposed? Oh, go ahead, Judy. Yep, yeah, sorry. That, that's okay. My hand was up a while ago and uh, there I just wasn't you. a spot, so that's fine. Um, no, I think um, I was at this uh, uh, Economic Development Planning Committee meeting and I think what um, really kind of hit home to me was there's been a lot of people um, making some, some noise and fairly enough um, that um, you know we need more housing and better housing and and less expensive housing and all that kind of stuff and and you know these secondary units they're not just for uh developers no. like this this puts this squarely in the hands of the ordinary citizen if you have a property i i know it doesn't work everywhere i know what everybody's not wanting to do it or cannot do it or whatever but i think there are a number of people who could actually build another unit on their property or they could uh, renovate and make an apartment and that bylaw that we passed for secondary units that that allows that to happen yep. and that puts that control in the hands of the ordinary citizen and you know I think I mean I knew that before but it really just kind of hit me and became very clear at that meeting and so uh, that that kind of that that kind of excited me that um, that we can kind of move that way and I think the other thing too is we do have a lot of seniors who are living in homes and like, I'm sorry, some of them are some of those homes, you know, they haven't been updated for a long time and so on and so forth. So I think those homes are less expensive once they get on the market. And that's, that's the shift that needs to happen. You know, we need to find homes for those people so that they can get out of those big older homes. And, and um, you know, I mean, we also have to think that, not everybody can afford that fancy house to start off with right mm -hmm. so um yeah. because you know everybody looks at what their parents some kids at least look at what their parents have and they think well that's what i want well sorry we didn't start there either so um you know <laughs> we all have that idea that we need to or at least a lot of people have the idea anyways that they need the fancy house to start off with and that's that's not life really so anyways um there's, there's definitely some adjustments need to be done, but um, anyways, that was my, anyways, that was my takeaway from that meeting um, was just, it kind of excited me because I thought, oh, that's the, that's the real step, right? It, and I knew it, but it just, it just really became clear to me. So just wanted to share. And, and that's, that's a good point, uh, Judy. And, and we've talked about that in, in economic development at the county as well. And it, it, it comes down to, we, we put some ownership on people. It was interesting when I was talking to uh, some Syrian refugees last night, and, and they were talking about big homes, big families. Um, you're right. I mean, we have a lot of seniors that are in these big homes, and we are we've done fairly well in a sense. I mean, Harrison's now going to have those other those 11 or 12 units that we approved that are down by the railway. Uh, there's another uh, one more unit of rentals going down by Harrison Packers, and then there's the ones we approved at the old house site. So those are all interesting concepts that are trying to keep it at a reasonable price and allowing our people to stay in their home and stay in their, their town, which is important. And that should free up some of that other inventory. But we're going to, the problem we have and what I see in the, in the horizon is the, is the 
fluctuation and people coming to migration, coming up from the cities and pushing forward to us, um, which is good and bad um, at the end of the day. So we need more supply even over and above, but great, great uh, conversation. And, and let's just keep our eye on the ball here and do as much as we can whenever we can, for sure. Okay, did I, did I do the, uh, I already did the thing, didn't I? Um, you did read it. You just had to ask if there was anyone opposed. Anybody opposed? Carried. Great. Now we're in the staff reports, and I'll turn it over to Ashley. Ashley should be here, and she's doing our administrative assistant on Park Lodge Control, King Street. Go ahead, Ashley. Good evening, Mayor Bridge and members of council. So this one's kind of an exciting one because council may recall this property coming forward on the February 16th meeting regarding a rezoning. So it's at 57 and 59 King Street South. The rezoning was to take a single family detached and then turn it into a semi detached. And that semi is now nearing uh, completion of the build. So the owner is now looking to subdivide it into two units with distinct and separate ownership so they can be sold. Um, it meets all of the zoning requirements of the area and the lot requirements as well. So the recommendation is that council receives this report and considers passing a bylaw in open session. Thank you, Ashley. And I'll, I'll read the uh, recommendation. Moved by Councilor Dirksen, second Council Elliott. The Council of Town of Middle receives a planning technician report regarding the part lot control exemption uh, application for 1998050 Ontario Limited, Bob Harris for property legally described as parts one and two and lot 15 NS King Street. Registered plan 61R 22001 in the former town of Harrison with municipal addresses 57 and 59 King Street South in the town of Minton considers passing a bylaw in open session. Any comments, sir? There's a good example of one of those fill ins that we've been doing. All, anybody opposed? Carried, thank you. Uh, Belinda. Me again, okay. <laughs> uh, this one is an agreement of purchase and sale from uh, JW Bowman Limited for the Hairston Industrial Park. And just to refresh your memory, because we've been working on this one a long time. Um, so yeah. They own Countryside Concrete as well. And this lot seven is right adjacent to it. It's 2.74 acres and they will be merging the properties and following all of our development covenants in terms of the size of the building to be constructed. Uh, we did give a little bit of an extension on timeline to construct because this is a, as you know, a tricky property. Um, it's gonna cost a substantial amount of money to get it ready to build on. And it is, uh, yeah, pretty challenging. So we did uh, give them some extra time to two years uh, to get going on a building permit there. So the sale price is $95,900. And uh, yeah, the development charges, who knows where they'll be in uh, two years, but this is where they sit right now and how much money you would expect it if it was coming through at this time. But this is our last service lot in the Harrison Industrial Park at this point. Okay, thanks. I'll read the recommendation moved by Councilor Anderson, second by Councilor McKenzie. The Council of Town of Minto receives the June 15, 2021 report from the business and economic manager regarding the agreement of purchase and sale for JW Bauman Limited for lot seven in the Harris Industrial Park and authorize the mayor and the clerk to sign the agreement of purchase and sale. Questions or comments? I'll call the question. Anybody opposed? Carried. Okay, go ahead, Melinda, you're up again. Okay, so this one is a first ray of refusal uh, from 1438352 Ontario Inc. for the Palmerston Industrial Park. This is for the two uh, parcels at the back of the industrial park, 420 and 460 Minto Road. These are some of the last remaining parcels and uh, total 7.8 acres. The company is looking to add warehouse space as they serve many of our businesses in Minto. They plan to construct a 100,000 square foot warehouse and cross docking facility and uh, potentially double in size in the next five years and hiring 25 employees to start. So they're pretty keen in moving forward. They just have to get some um, financing and other approvals in place. So they did request a first drive refusal until September. Um, I think this is an appropriate way to go because if somebody does come forward, uh, we will give them 30 days to uh, respond. 
And if they are not able to do that, we can move on with a different purchaser. But if they are, then we can still maintain this relationship. So um, they have provided a non-refundable deposit of $1,000. And again, the property would be going for 35,000 an acre. And at the time of sale it would be $273,000. And then a significant amount of development charges would be collected too. So obviously we're suggesting that we uh, go ahead and sign this agreement for first right refusal. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Glenn. And I'll read the uh, recommendation. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Council Dirksen, the Council of the Town of Minda receives the June 15, 2021 report from the Business and Economic Development Manager regarding the first rate of refusal agreement for 1438352 Ontario Inc. for 420 and 460 Minto Road and in, in the Commerce and Industrial Park and authorized the mayor to sign the agreement. Questions? Uh, go ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor Turton. Thank you. Mayor Bridge, it's not really a question. I mean, we've done this before and it works out very well for us. So I recommend that we go ahead and do this again. Yeah, for sure. And and this is somebody that, as you know, we we they wanted the other parcel, so we've been able to keep them in the park. So that's kind of neat to see too. And and uh, yeah, it's only 30 days. If somebody does come up, we can move forward. So okay, anybody opposed? Carried. Very good. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh, I'll move it to Councillor Dirksen to assume the uh, chair. Thank you, Mary Bridge. Uh, we have the uh, the uh, report that I think wins the prize for the most acronyms ever. Um, so I will uh, just call on Todd Rogers to uh, take us through that report, please. Thanks, Councillor Dirksen. Uh, yeah, the report tonight is more more just for information. Uh, just to make everybody aware that. Uh, our permit to take water for Palmerston was successfully renewed. So that's good for another 10 years. Uh, same, same quantities as we'd previously had. And then also on all our water systems, we have the drinking water works permit and municipal drinking water licenses. And we've successfully renewed all those as well. So all the systems are in good shape. And yeah, just like uh, Mike worked really hard on these. It was a really big undertaking. It takes a lot of information to, uh, to get these licenses and permits and a lot of back and forth with the ministry. So Mike's been very busy on it and yeah, every, and was successful and everything, everything turned out really good for us. So okay. if there's any questions relating to any of them, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Okay. I don't, Oh, uh, CAO Thompson. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I just, I would just like to mention that our, our thoughts and prayers are with Mike right now with the sudden passing of his mom uh, early, or sorry, late, late last week. So we just want to make mention that our thoughts are with him because Mike did a tremendous amount of work. I can tell you a tremendous amount of work to get these licensing license approved. And uh, we just want to recognize him for his efforts and, and let him know that our thoughts are with him right now in this, this trying time. So. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Thank you, CEO Thompson. You took the words pretty much right out of my mouth. Um, and Todd, if you could uh, extend our thank you to uh, Mike for, for the work that he put into this as well. Definitely that would be will. appreciated. Um, so I'm gonna read the recommendation that council receives, oh, sorry, moved by Mayor Bridge and seconded by Councillor Anderson, that council receives the June 15th, 2021 report, renewed permit to take water, municipal drinking water license, and the drinking water works permit, mental drinking water systems from the uh, DWQMS representative and acknowledges the renewal of the Palmerston permit to take water and the municipal drinking water license and the drinking water works permit for all mental drinking water systems. Okay, is there, is there anyone who is opposed? Okay, seeing none. That carries. Oh, did you? Are you opposed, or you have a question, Deputy Mayor? Yeah, I just have a quick question, if you don't mind, with Todd on the phone here sure. on the uh, TV. How's the paint job coming, Palmerston? It's progressing, progressing really well. Uh, I would say we're within a couple of weeks. If there's no surprises, the big thing, the big thing, of course, is weather. Uh, rain really hasn't been a problem. We haven't been getting much, but uh, it's uh, wind. Like even today, it seemed like a great day, but. If there's any kind of wind at all, the, the equipment that they use, 
just doesn't allow them to even be up there. They've got safeties built into it that they just can't do it. So on the days we have had, they've been working inside the tank. So it's, it's worked well. It's not like they've had days where they aren't working, but yeah, if, if we can get a, a good stretch of weather here with, with no wind and maybe, maybe some gentle showers overnight and leave the days for painting, we, we should be in pretty good shape here. I've heard that you've had numerous spectators and I understand you're doing a great job. So congratulations on that. It's been a well planned project. I understand. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Is there anyone else? Okay, so I already uh, I already declared it carried. So we will just move on then uh, to the next one. And this is from, uh, we need our roads and drainage manager, Mike McIsaac, who's just come on and he's going to tell us about a drain maintenance. Thank you. So the, the, the report in front of you here is just to allow staff to um, bill out costs associated with drain maintenance that took place a couple of years ago um, on municipal drain number nine. Uh, and that's basically the area associated with this is in between 87 and uh, the 11th line just off of school road seven, just for reference. Um, is there any questions associated with this? It's uh, typical for drain maintenance that we require uh, a bylaw pass to uh, enable us to assess these costs out. Okay, is there anyone? I don't see anyone, so I'll read the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Gunson and seconded by Deputy Mayor Turton, the Council of the Town of Minto receives the report from the Treasurer and Roads and Drainage Manager regarding municipal drain maintenance assessments and considers passage of the related assessment bylaw in open session. Is there anyone opposed? Okay, I'll declare that carried and thank you, Mike. And I'll pass the chair back to the Mayor, who is muted. Yeah, I, had, I was heady on that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dixon, okay, so I'm back and I will turn it over to the clerk who's going to give us the report. Thank you, Mayor Bridge. Through you, uh, this is for an employment bylaw amendment. We passed our bylaw, of course, in January, appointing everyone to all their committees, but we do need to make uh, a few replacements. So we had a staff who left and we need a new livestock valuer and fence viewer. And thank you, Mike McIsaac, for stepping into that role. And as well, Scott Richardson will now take the vacant position of the Palmerston representative for the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. This is more of a housekeeping item, but it's something that is required. Thank you, and I'll read the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor Gunson. The Council of the Town of Minnow receives the June 15, 2021 report from the clerk regarding updating the appointment bylaw and considers an amended pending bylaw in regular session. Any questions, concerns? Anybody opposed? Carried, okay. And I guess uh, you're still up. Yes, thank you, Mayor Bridge. Uh, the next one is for a road widening on Minto Road. Again, it's kind of a housekeeping item. Uh, during the part of a review of the title, Van Harten's noted that there's a five meter wide strip uh, along the front of the property, like a part seven, that does not have public highway dedication. So in order to go across that, you do need to have that be noted as a public highway. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's just passing a bylaw and having that registered to have that five meter allowance uh, then stated and uh, add it to the width of the Minto Road. Great, okay. I'll read the recommendation moved by Council McKenzie, second by Council Elliott. The Council of Town of Minto receives the June 15, 2021 report from the clerk regarding road widening Minto Road uh, and considers a bylaw in regular session to widen Minto Road. Uh, any questions? Uh, Councillor Dixon. So um, we're not actually physically widening the road then, we're just, it's just paperwork. It's, it's paperwork, paper yes, it's a housekeeping item for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, right. we, we, just have, we have to note it as part of the public highway though. Yes, okay, that, okay, that makes you feel much better, thank you. Yeah, yep. it, it sounds weird that we're not really widening the road, we're just saying the road is wider, as wide as it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, who'd have thunk that, eh? Really? Okay. Anybody opposed? Carried. Okay. And other businesses closed. Uh, David. Uh, thank you, Mayor Bridget. Over the last couple of weeks, I've had numerous calls. People stop me on the street and want to talk about the bylaw that we put in into effect in the last few months about the side by uh, the sidekicks and the four by fours. 
And I mean, we really didn't have a whole lot of choice in this bylaw. All we did was uh, control where some of the folks were going to be driving. Uh, but the, the bottom line here is, and I tell people, these three people that call three different people, uh, we can't do anything about the guy behind the wheel. I mean, all these vehicles are supposed to be licensed. Uh, they're supposed to be, have uh, of age drivers. And I mean, the only thing that they can do when they see somebody going the wrong way on a sidewalk uh, is phone the police, get yeah. the drive, get the license plate and phone the police. Um, it's no different than a, than a, uh, a car. When you see some a drunk driver or whatever, you see somebody driving crazy, you get his driver's license, you phone 911 and, and hopefully the, the OPPs will come and, and look after them. I mean, I do see uh, more, in fact, we were heading to Southampton on Saturday and I seen 12 four by fours coming down the main street in Paisley. Mm -hmm. I was, it, it was like, you know, it was like a, a group of motorcycles or snowmobiles. I don't know whether they were out on trails, but they were right on the main street. But so, I mean, it's up to the individual that's driving the vehicle and, uh, or the four by fours. And I mean, it's it, some of the things that I've been told that people are doing, it's nuts. They're, 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 so they need to take a second look, realize what they're doing and drive much more cautious and drive like reasonable people. I mean, that's, that's really all we can do or say, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, good, good point, David. And I, I've had a few people say they're doing certain things. And, and if they're doing things illegal, then we call the police. It's no different than anything else. That, and if the police can get a hold of them, but it, you're right, if you can take the license number, that might help out a little bit too. So uh, by all means, it, it, is, it is what it is at this point in time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Councilor Anderson, did you have something or do you want to? Sorry, you're muted. Uh. Um, sorry, everybody's aware of my viewpoint on these, but the ones that I've seen, there is no license in view. And they're clearly, flagrantly violating the laws. They pass you. They're supposed to be driving slower. They pass you. There are people on those things. They have no helmet, no license, and they're not of age. Uh, hopefully I mean, you can call the police, but they're not going to find them. They're not going to catch them. They're, they'll just duck into the field. So, I, I mean, I share the concerns, but we didn't get a lot of feedback beforehand. So, well, it, you know. And I, and I would say, Councilor Anderson, whether we have a bylaw or don't have a bylaw, those yep. still people would still be doing it. There just seems to be more of it now because they think it's they've got carte blanche. Well, they'll end up getting caught eventually, and uh, it'll it'll get around there. If, if that's the case, if they're doing things illegally um, and, and report them if you can. I mean, that's the only thing that I can say. I and mean, if they don't have a license, you, they don't have a license, but you can tell the police that they're heading because it could be the same people all the time on the same roads. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to get into a debate about it, but I just, I, I think it, I think what Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Turton wanted to say is it is personal responsibility on some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to take that responsibility um, anyways. Uh, who else said, Judy, did you, I couldn't remember. Yeah, okay. Yes, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to uh, thank Belinda and uh, her team, um, Cultural Roundtable uh, last night. Uh, they, they put on a, a terrific event in, uh, and they planned it in a very short period of time. Um, saw Matt Lubrizer uh, looking after sound as well and public works and our uh, fire department um, were directing traffic. Um, so that was very helpful. OPP were there. Uh, so I want to thank them for their assistance. And of course, everyone who came out, I have no idea whether anybody had a head count, but I would guess two to 300 people. Am I sort of in the ballpark? Um, but anyways, it was, uh, it was a great event. Um, you know, unfortunately, probably 99.9% .9 of people who were there, you know, are already, um, in agreement. Um, I don't think there's probably too many people there who were, you know, sitting on the fence and going to the event to, to learn. But um, in any case, it certainly brought a lot of awareness to the issue. And um, that's, you know, every, every little bit helps that we can do. So anyways, thanks, uh, Belinda. Um, kudos to you and your team. 
Thanks, Councillor Dirksen. And yeah, you're right. There, you're pretty accurate on your head count. We had uh, 200 uh, ribbons made up, which um, Doreen Anderson and uh, Megan Raftis and Peggy all uh, put together in one day, and they were all gone. And uh, yeah, we raised uh, I think just over $700 uh, to go to the families that were impacted by that video, which was lovely. And yeah, huge shout out to all of the people. Um, the county was a huge help. Um, coming to our meeting on Saturday, having some resources, all the members of the Pride Committee, the Culture Roundtable, and our staff, like Paul Judge <laughs> planting a tree, getting me a tree on Monday, and uh, Mike and his crew looking after traffic, and the rec staff setting up, like really it was a, and Lean came and helped last minute too, so it really was a team, team effort, so thanks to everybody for their assistance. Yeah, yeah. much appreciated. Yeah, and uh... I was I was going to be Judy one of mine, but that's fine. I have two, so yeah, I'll let you have that one. And, I think and it probably was. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate everybody, and you know what? When when I got hit with this, I uh, uh, Councillor Valentine from uh, uh, Center Wellington. Uh, she's a county councillor and a teacher. She sent me the thing. I wouldn't have. I don't. I don't go on TikTok, so I would never have seen it probably. And she sent it to me on Thursday. I, I was able the of. Uh, Derek and Scott Wilson on Friday morning and uh, or, well, organized it uh, Friday morning with the warden as well. And that's when we sent out the press release. And then uh, the Cultural Roundtable team picked it up on Saturday and felt that that was fine, but we needed to do something more. And I thought that was great. And I must say that the county came together with us as well. And uh, it was interesting to see Colleen there doing the uh, land acknowledgement because this is something I've been working on, but she, 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 there, our, our little mental has a real kind of a, a complicated situation. There's, there's still one treaty that is sort of a non-name treaty and she was still working to research out um, in order to get the proper uh, one. So she, she felt comfortable last night or the, yeah, last night because she did finally get all the research done. So she's been working on this since they did one for Wellington County. Um, so we will be able to use that going forward. And I, I may suggest that we might want to do something at our first council meeting when we get in person. But I thought, I thought her message uh, about the East, West, North and South when she was doing the smudging, I, I, I brought tears in my eyes and it, it really hit home on what was happening last night. And I was able to talk to two of the steering ladies that were actually in the video and they were quite concerned they hadn't left their house. But after, after the event, I got talking to them again with their granddaughter and uh, they don't speak a lot of English, but the interpreter was there and uh, they felt now they're safe again. And you gotta remember these people came from a war torn situation where they weren't safe. And not only that, governments aren't something that they feel comfortable with either because governments come and go in, in their situation. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was really happy, happy to see the turnout that Minho did last night, but that was just totally amazing. And, and you know, from that, I, and Belinda, we will be bringing a report sooner than later, but um, the Cultural Roundtable before this, before COVID hit, we were working on the diversity uh, thing, and we were actually trying to get a committee together and whatnot, but it's very difficult to do in a Zoom world. And uh, so Colleen sort of board, we have uh, Amon is now looking at helping uh, Filipino community. We, we need to get those people involved in what our needs are to make sure that we're a welcoming community and we're not having any kind of situations like we had. We can't control what that gentleman was. He, he moved into our community like every, some other people move into your community. You have no control. And uh, obviously he has a history. Um, and it, it, but anyways, I was really proud of everybody that was there last night and all the people. and. Uh, yeah, th those things, when you're the mayor and you can't go to an event like that, that's what makes it worthwhile to put the time and effort in and get, hear some of the criticism that I know all you get from time to time, but to see your, your constituents come out and, and stand up to the plate, uh, just hit you there, right? Anyways, um, that's the other one I was going to talk to you about is a little bit of good news, I'm hoping as well, um, is the fact that uh, we had some numbers of, with COVID, and as you know, we're down to about 13% now. Um, we, we got 45,000 vaccines this week, 
uh, and 10,000 went out to, to doctors and, uh, uh, and our pharmacies and the other 35. So if you now can, after eight weeks, can get your second shots, we want to be, we want this summer to be the second dose summer. And I've, I would love Gene to be able to say to you some way down the road, you want to wear a mask for a while, but you're still <laughs> going to wear a mask. But, but at the end of the day, if we can get that 80% double dosed, so to speak, and by September and maybe our kids, and we've got a couple, uh, uh, the kids are moving up in the, in the rankings as well um, because there's a bunch of targeted uh, ones for the 12 to 17 year olds in the next couple of days. Um, looks like we're gonna continue to get that type of vaccine and uh, public health ratcheting up their process. So if you haven't got your second dose yet, I haven't got mine yet. I'm hoping to get the call any day now. Um, or you can go to the pharmacies uh, and they can get you hooked up and uh, uh, go out and get it. And I just talked to everybody. And if you haven't had your first dose, by all means, go and get it. Um, because there was a report just came out before I got on the air. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, Gene, but it's from the UK. And remember, we were talked about the the uh, the new variant was only 33% after your first dose. Well, the, the UK just sent out a thing that said, no, we're better than that. But uh, and so that's a bigger study they did in the UK. But we we can beat this thing if we can uh, get everybody out in the next uh, three or four weeks and, and get that going. Anyways, Jean, if you want to mention anything, let's go ahead. Um, so the vaccines are, are one aspect of this. And I think we're making really good progress then on that. And like public health is to be commended and, uh, on the job they've done. I know there's lots of confusion about the doses and we still have people, you know, which one do they take? And it's unfortunate that some of them got the coverage they have. The big concern I have right now is the social gatherings that are happening with this first level. There are people posting all kinds of events online now. We saw one with a reveal there had to be 20, 30, 40 people. We saw a wedding reception. There were 40 or 50 or 60 people. There were no masks. I drive by the parks when I'm going to Fergus. I drive by one park. It is packed full of children. There have to be 100 people there. There's no masks. We're not there yet, people. No, like, you're right. <laughs> we're not there. I know we all want to be there. We wish we were there, but we're not. And if we're not careful, we're going to undo all the good that's been done in the time that we've spent. Because people just are, are, they're just sort of going at summertime and we're going out and the traffic on the weekend, I don't know where they're all going. The, the campgrounds are supposed to be closed. I don't know where they were going with the campers or the trailers, but they were uh, on the road. They, they opened up the camps after stage one. They can go now. But but I, I, I agree with what you're saying, Gene. And, and there is, and Dr. Mercer will be the first to tell you, like, you cannot get rid of the masks yet. You've got to make sure that you do your social distancing as best you can. Um, we don't need big parties yet. We're, we're a month away or so, but, you know, give it that. We're a month away or so. Yeah. Just get vaccinated, and then you'll be able to have your fun. Yeah, I, I just, I right? I'm not sure how we get that message to people. And I don't know what we do. Like, if we're aware of those gatherings, do we, do we call OPP? Are they policing this? You call public health? Is there any? Because I've had questions coming to me. Who would we call? I said, I don't really know. You know, you hope you people have enough common sense, but there are other people who are being impacted and they're concerned about these gatherings, but they don't know who to call or what to do. Well, if I if I was my own self, we talked about if if you're into a situation where all of a sudden you see a big gathering like that and mm -hmm. they're not wearing masks, your best bet is to get the heck out yourself. Just don't go there. But, right. but I mean, I mean, I understand that, but I mean, but you can't, but control, are, I'm not sure who, who can, like if yeah. there's a camera out there, I'm not, I can't really tell you, Gene, I don't think there is right now, to be honest. I with don't you. either. And I, I've had people ask, because they have children say, and they're going to a daycare and then they realize the people who are providing the daycare or people who are also going to the daycare have been wherever. And people aren't thinking of what they're potentially bringing back to that other person. They said, we just saw them for five minutes. Okay, but you were here two hours before that. And then you brought it back and then that person goes to a daycare center and now we potentially like they're oh, well, we're all tired everybody's tired of it they want to but it's just to remind where we can come on guys this is this is not where we are yet yeah i agree i agree okay that's what i had okay uh where are we now notice the motion oh sorry moved by council dirksen second by council mckenzie the committee of whole convenes the regular council anybody opposed seeing none Okay, notice the motion. 
Sini. Uh, moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Dirksen, the Council of the Town of Minnow ratifies the motions made in the Committee of the Whole. Any opposed? No? Okay, good. Bylaws. That's approved. Uh, bylaws 2021-51, sale of land of industrial park to J.W. Bowman Limited. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Council Anderson. Bylaw number 2021-51 to authorize the sale of industrial lands in the Harrison Industrial Park to J.W. Bowman Limited. Be read first, second, and third time. Passed open, open council on COC of the corporation. Anybody opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Gustin, signed by Deputy Mayor Turton, the bylaw number 2021-52 to levy assessment for drain nine that was repaired or maintained under section 74 of the Drainage Act 2016. Be read first, second, and third time. Passed open council on COC of the corporation. Anybody opposed? Carried. Move by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor Gutsons, the bylaw number 2021-53 for the purpose of amending bylaw 2021-03, appointing municipal council members and citizens of the town of Minnow be read first, second, and third time and passed the open council and COC of the corporation. Anybody opposed? Seeing none. Move by Councillor McKenzie, second by Councillor Elliott, that the bylaw number 2021-54 bylaw to exempt Part lot control for lands being part one and part two of lot 15 northeast of King Street, inclusive of plan 61R22001 in the former town of Harrison, town of Minto, under section 57.1 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990, as amended, be read first, second, and third time, pass an open council, seal, seal the corporation. Anybody opposed? Carried. Moving by Councillor Dirksen, second by Councillor Gunson, to bylaw number 2021-55 to authorize the first right of refusal agreement between the Corporation of Town of Minto and 1438352 Ontario, Inc. Be read first, second, and third time, passed over Council COC of the Corporation. Anybody opposed? Carried. Moving by Councillor Anderson, second by Councillor Dirksen, the bylaw number 2021-56, a bylaw to designate part seven of plan 36. One R twenty forty nine O as a public highway widening into a road be introduced read first second and third time and passed on by council seal seal the corporation. Anybody opposed? Carried. Moved by Deputy Mayor Turton, second by Council McKenzie. The bylaw number twenty twenty one fifty seven to confirm the actions of the council of the corporation sound of respecting a meeting held June fifteenth twenty twenty one be read first second and third time and passed open council and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Anybody opposed? Carried. Moved by Councillor Gunson, second by Councillor Elliott. The Council of the Town of Minnow adjourns to meet again at the call of the mayor. Anybody opposed to that? We're looking good. Thanks, everybody, for a good meeting. And, uh, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. Good night, everybody.